But I want to give you three quick facts for context in case you're sort of new to this whole EV charging thing. So the first thing to remember is that you don't have to wait until the battery is empty to charge it. You can charge up from 4%, from 20%, from 73%, or even from 90% if you want to. The second thing to remember is that you don't have to wait for the battery to be full before you take it off the charger. Idea here being you can take little sips of electricity along the way if you like. Third thing to remember is that most EV drivers are charging exclusively at home. I get asked fairly often why we don't see more cars at the charging stations that we have here in Northern Ontario, despite the fact that there are so many electric cars driving around. The answer is because most of them are charging up at home in their driveway. In this video, we're talking to an EV charging expert to answer some of the internet's most common questions about electric vehicle chargers and electric vehicle charging. This video is a summary of a more in-depth article which you'll find over at driving.ca, so for more information on the topic, head over to driving.ca for a deeper dive into the subject matter we're covering here. What's the difference between a smart EV charger and a dumb EV charger? According to Ryan Chan of ChargeForward.com, for a single-family home, the most cost-effective method to charge an EV is to purchase a dumb charger. Smart chargers are geared towards condo charging as the smart capabilities allow the charger to bill individual customers for their energy use, provide access to control the EV charger, and provide electrical load management between multiple charging vehicles. According to Chan, it's important to note that only smart chargers are available for supply and installation rebates. Dumb charger pricing can range from $300 to $800, and smart chargers cost approximately $2,500. How does an EV charger work? For level 2 charging, AC power is supplied from the charging station to the onboard charger in the vehicle, which supplies DC power to the battery. For level 3 DC fast charging, the charger is off-board the vehicle and supplies direct current power directly to the battery. When do I charge an EV? According to Ryan Chan, you should check for the specific charging recommendations for your vehicle, but typically you should be recharging your EV if it's between 30 and 80% of remaining battery charge. Chan says, to preserve the best battery health of your EV, you want to charge as often and as slow as you can. The more rapidly you charge your battery, the more heat is created. This can degrade your battery over time, though it is becoming less of an issue with the development of battery cooling technology in new cars. Can I charge a Tesla on a level 2 home charger? Yes, and Chan's recommendation is to install an EV charger with a Type 1 or J1772 plug and use an adapter to charge the Tesla. As EV charging plugs are not standardized throughout the industry, the most common level 2 charging port throughout North America is that Type 1 or J1772 connector. Chan says we would recommend avoiding installing an EV charger with a Tesla connector, as that connector is only compatible with Tesla vehicles, and if the homeowner purchases a non-Tesla vehicle in the future, they won't be able to use that charger. Does an EV charger increase home value? According to ChargeForward.com, on average, installing a Level 2 charger can add approximately $3,000 to $5,000 to a home's value. EV chargers are often seen as desirable selling features for homes in Canada, and as demand for EVs continues to grow, home charging is seen as a cheap, convenient, clean, and reliable way to recharge your electric car. What is the cheapest way to charge an EV at home? According to Chan, that's level 1 charging on a standard wall plug if you have access. If not, look for a public charger provided by the local government EV charging networks. BC Hydro in British Columbia and Electric Circuit in Quebec, for instance, offer some of the most competitive EV charging rates in Canada. If I install an EV charger now, what happens when the technology changes in 10 years? According to Chan, the current format of level 1, 2, and 3 charging is being adopted and implemented by automakers, governments, and businesses around the world. As there may be advances in battery technology and the development of EVs, the method of EV charging is mostly standardized. Therefore, it's expected that there will be minimal changes to the charging technology over the next decade. I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below so you never miss a new upload. And until next time, take care and drive soon. If you like this video, we've got plenty more like it, so consider hitting the subscribe button down below so you never miss a new upload, leaving a like if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.